Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Crazy Town Podcast. My name is Jonas, I'm your host, and I'm here with TNT Dynamite, the explosive one, TNT, a D-I-N-O, and my D-H-D. What up, Johnny? Oh, uh, dude, you know, just, I'm here to bring people real knowledge about real world things. Oh, are you? Yeah, that's what I do. Uh, they is, call me Mr. Knowledge in the streets. You're trying to bring some knowledge to the to the younger generation? Oh, man. I drop so much knowledge, yeah. they might as well call me a professor. A lot of the generation's getting young, Jonas. Professor J, dude. Pro- <laughs> professor J? Professor Jonas, Mr. dude. Mr. J? Yeah, dude. I, uh... Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm there's getting older things going on. So, uh, but no, thank you so much for joining us here on the Crazy Town Podcast. Whether you're listening to us on our YouTube channel at Crazy Town Media, that's where you can subscribe for that. Or, uh, you know, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, all that ish for podcasts. This guy, he's on Twitch. He does Twitch things. TNT Dynamite. I'm on Twitch every single day at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock Central. Uh, that is TNT D-I-N-O-M-I-G-H-T underscore crazy town. Oh. Sweat all over my chest. <laughs> and... <laughs> That's what you'll see he's, when you get he's, there. He's sweating. He's tr- <laughs> just shirtless and sweating Sweat on camera. All of my chest. Like, you have the camera set up where it's just you shirtless sweating, and the little side cam that's normally the person is the video game. Yeah. See this? Watch your chest sweat for four hours. Oh, that's actually <laughs> great. A little bit of nipple hair in there. <laughs> yeah, dude. Just sweating all over his chest. Jonas, do you have hairy areolas? I have hairy everything because I'm a hairy ass man. So, is it like. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Wait, is your nipple like an oasis? <laughs> no, I'm not talking about my nipples. I just mean I just, like I have, I have chest hair. I'm all, my, my family is a fully hairy family. All right. Yeah, dude, it is the worst. If you're not a hairy person, be thankful because it is terrible. <laughs> Jonas, you know, just a quick diversion. Dude, well, I swear. Worries. You know I'm excited about cyberpunk. Yes, I do. You can choose your penis, Jonas, in that game. You have two choices of penis, one choice for vagina, five pubic hair types. Five. Re- wait, so what do you what do you have? Like a small penis or a big penis? That's like your options? No, I'm I'm assuming circumcised and uncircumcised. Oh, but you, but you don't get to choose like the length. Like oh, because yes, you, can, like, you get oh you get to choose your lengths. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like so you can like make you can choose how your vagina looks? Like, if you want, like... I think you only get one choice in vagina. Because, you know, like, there's different types of vaginas. Like, there's, yeah. like... Yeah, right? You know, there's, there's the like, different knuckle. ways that the labias and the all that yeah. stuff is formed. Yeah. The clam sickle, the moose knuck, the, uh, <laughs> Sure, yes. The <laughs> but, uh, so the... Pe- oh, pe- circumcised. So, like, you get to be, like, so... But you get to, like, have sex and, like... I don't know, And have man. babies we and don't stuff? Know. We don't know. But I was just... I was just thinking about hairy areolas, and I was like, I'd like to have that as an option. <laughs> Sorry, this is where my mind goes. Hey, man, it's cool, dude. We all this is where minds. my mind goes. So, I wanted to talk about, I was going to talk about this on the last episode, but we ran out of time because we went on America the Beautiful. There is big things happening in the world where, you know, we're trying to get major change made um, as far as, like, Black Lives Matter and all sorts of things along those sort of... Are we getting political? That realm. No, we're not. I have read now that the Washington Redskins have officially said they are going to explore explore but what I but what uh but what I read into that was like by them saying they're exploring that means they're changing because they yeah. they have they've always said we're never going to do it and now For, now just to explore it to the point they have odds online of what their new name might be at a Vegas sports book so it is happening if the Vegas yeah. if a Vegas sports book has odds to what the new name's going to be it's already decided. Yeah. And people are placing bets on it. Yeah. So I have here a list of the Washington of, Redskins. Of what they think the possible. Washington Redskins may be turned into. You know, there's gonna come a point in time where we're gonna look back and we like, can we believe we used to call Well, them? that was like the basketball team used to be called the Washington Bullets, and they were like, eh, that's not the best. Let's change it to the Wizards. That was in our lifetime. I don't know what a bullet is. I'm sorry, I'm not that deep in racism where I No, know. just like it promotes violence. Bullets. Oh <laughs> like what are you calling black people bullets because no, we're black? Dude. I don't know. No, they were just like they were just like, it's probably not the best to have our state capital team be the bullets. Oh no, well, I mean, come on. But so it's it's but you know, it's like uh I uh I have it here. Like now there were there were uh there was a couple things that were like 10 to 1 odds down to like the best odds were 3 to 1. I'm going to go in reverse. Mm-hmm. That some of the 10 to 1 stuff was like some president's names like the Roosevelt's, the things Ew. like that. Like at 8 I think it was like 8 to 1 was monuments, so the Washington monuments. Oh, I like that. Then some of the other ones were the capitals, eh. the memorials, 
The Americans. No. The Washington <laughs> Americans. That is bad. That's the worst. That's the the worst. Kings. No. Of, then the, the top three were the Lincolns. What? The Generals, which is already the baseball team's name. So I don't think that that's going to be because they're the Washington, D.C. They're, oh, no, they're the Nationals. They used to be the Generals. Back For the, the best day. car service in town, uh, one the 800 one, general now. The three to one odds of what they're going to be called. So it's, this is the favorite is the Washington Presidents. Those are all bad. Yes. The only one I liked was like the first. The monuments? One. Yeah, I liked the monuments. Like it would be cool if it was the Washington monuments and it had like Ooh. the Washington monument on the side of their helmet, dude. Uh, but what, um. What I kind of like the color scheme. <laughs> well, yeah, they, we yeah. The well, yeah, they maroon and yellow. And so, that's a very unique color scheme. So I don't know what they're going to really do. And none of these may be what they are. Yeah. But they, but they said that this could happen as soon as this season. Oh, it should definitely which is great, happen. Which yeah. is great. Um, yeah. the other thing, the Indians have also said they are going to consider changing their name. So that's probably going to happen too. Fair but enough. I read about the Indians. And what the Indians said that they're going to do is they're going to consult with uh, the Native American community. Yeah. They're going to consult with fans, players, and alumni to come up with a new name for the team. Yeah. So I think they want to keep. I think they want to keep the heritage towards like a Native American. So the indigenous people or, so, or whatever. Is. But it, I think it's really cool that they're going to go and talk to like you know like the community. No, we ain't going to be the Cleveland Navajos. R though. Right. But I don't but think they, they said, allow that. Right. But the previous. Previously, the Indians were called the Bluebirds, the Broncos, and the Naps, N-A-P-S. And they changed to the Indians in 1915. So it's been 105 years they've been the Indians. No, well, that's, that's plenty of time, dude. Yeah. So, um, and they, you know, they've already been taking steps because they changed Chief Wahoo to the Big C a couple yeah, of years ago. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. they've been moving away from that for a while. I've still um, got the last dregs of some Chief Wahoo yeah. in my closet. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, dude. It's But I it's going to be, you know, because one of these... I, could, I couldn't care less about the red, the Redskin team, you know, in general, to be mm. honest. But the Indians hit home. It's our hometown team, dude. So for them to change that, that's, I mean, that's a, I mean, I'm sure the people in Washington, D.C. are like, it's a big deal to change our team's name, you know? The Cleveland Cuyahoga? I could see them. Uh, isn't that Cuyahoga County? The River Hogs? The River Hogs. Lake, the Cleveland Lake of Fire? Uh, hey, that's actually kind would, of dude, fire. If they, if they called them the Cleveland Fire, that would be awesome, the dude. Cleveland Fire. I'd watch that. I would too. Dude. <laughs> just have, just has like a fucking flame on their helmet dude, or on their hat. Dude, imagine the With caps. A backdrop of down, backdrop of downtown. Dude, if they had caps and it was like, then they had like black caps with just like a just fire on it, dude. And like the cityscape, dude. Like the city, dude. That would be. That would be great. I would buy the I, shit out of that. I think, I put two one six on it or though. something, dude. <laughs> I don't think it will work though. Probably not. I think people would take it the wrong way. Yeah, they I probably. Mean, all right. Well, Jonas, and all in all, that that's great, Jonas. Yeah, that they're finally looking into changing some of that uh, hate heritage. Yeah, yeah, but I just hope they don't go with them. Like I said, the appropriation route, which is right, like, right, right, right. We're gonna call ourselves the Cuyahoga County Indians. Yeah, or the yeah, or they'll do something like uh, you know, like well, they already have the Kansas City Chiefs, so I was like, the, go like the, the Cleveland Chiefs. You know what I mean? Something like. Cause like, but no one's complained about the Kansas City Chiefs. That's that's definitely an Indian sort of thing. Yeah, but, but no the, one, the word isn't. But the chief is always like a respectable thing, and then they're they're the chief yeah. of the community. You know we use I mean? chief all over the place. It's, right. It's an it's analogous, but yeah, but it's not just like a racial slur. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, an, an Indian wasn't really used as a racial slur either, but it has it, the connotation. It, it does have a yeah. So we definitely. I mean, Redskins thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. A term just that the is racial the racial slur. Yeah, just straight up. <laughs> yes. No one in in fifty years has been okay with calling any other community color of the skin as a term. <laughs> hey, guess what? Your skin's a different color. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. They and they're like, and they're, and they're like, it's not even red. <laughs> it's not, I'm actually burnt sienna. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Like. So, I want to touch on one other thing real quick before we get anything else, mate. So you know we got we got we got Corona going on out here. Oh Jesus, we but can uh, talk more about Corona. Just, no, this is I thought I thought this was interesting. So you know certain cities, states are you know they're on fire right now, obviously, um, with coronavirus. The city of Houston, the mayor has started an online wall of shame. Yeah, for, for businesses that are that are blatantly breaking coronavirus protocol. Cancel businesses. <laughs> the, uh, it's called it's called the the wall of shame. That's so far, they've put three businesses on. I'm not going to say the names of the businesses. Why wouldn't you? 
Because I didn't write them down. Oh, okay. But uh, one was a reception hall that had was documented having like a big some sort of gathering with no, no prevention. And then there was two sports bars in which Ooh. those sports bars have already had a th- on top of being put on this 30 day liquor license suspension. Mm-hmm. Um, no other penalties other than, but you're, but you're put on the, the scarlet letter shame wall that you like, don't care about like, you know, keeping people safe during a time of a pandemic. I've also read when I was looking at this article, some of them have already sued the city because they're saying that it was like, you know, there was no warning given and it was like def- now it's defamation and da 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 You know how law firms work. I, I can see that. Yeah, but the problem is there was a warning given. The warning was do this. It's a mandate by the state. So why should you why should the state have to come in and go, hey, remember when we told you to do something? You're not doing it. You should do this. That's your warning. No, the warning is, hey, this is what you have to do. Facts. So that, I mean, that's 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 the boomer mentality we're looking at. I kind of I don't know. I see the desperation in these companies, man. You put all your life earned into a sports oh, bar, I, and oh, it's I just get like, it. yo, this is my this is everything. If, I, if this goes under, I have nothing. Yeah. So I mean, and that's that's the truth for a lot of these smaller businesses. Right, right. A lot it, of these. It ain't the thing for Walmart, but it's. Yeah, but, but for it, yeah, for like, it is the truth for a lot of these businesses. So I see the desperation. And the fact that you would over, that you would just look past like a decree. Yeah, like, like that. if you're a Rasin Hall, your whole business is gatherings of people more than a hundred. I just think about all the people that we've interacted with that depended so much on people being able to gather. Oh like, yeah, the people that we knew from improv. Our improv in it's gone. Who oh. knows if they'll ever have another improv class because improv ain't the business to get into right now. Right. And then I think about all the people that we worked with and like. We had a school teacher. We had uh, we had writers, and we had like people in our class who had all these different occupations. Yeah, and the I one think guy about- was a, he was an actor. He was extras, and he let, he quit his quit his job, quit to, his to, his job to, to to pursue act. acting because he was finally getting enough work. Yeah, and now he how it's affecting them, man. Like we we definitely are fortunate enough where we just get to, we we are basically unaffected to a certain extent. Yeah, I mean we got to stay home and stuff, but I mean we both but have yeah. our jobs. I'm we're both in industries that aren't going away. Yeah, and I mean, we both work for I mean, I work for a big enough company that my company's not going to fold cuz they yeah. are needed. And you work in an industry but that regardless res- of your company size, you will be okay. Yeah, but regardless, man, you got to be responsible, man. If they say you can't have your business open, yeah. you got to just Well, yeah, because it you was and, you, you know, it's do. a godsend because I've always <laughs> wanted to start my own business and I'll, up until recently I knew it wasn't going to be the thing but back I wanted to have like a store but like if I would have started that store at any point yep it I it you know what I mean it's like if you're just John John B's reception hall and you just had a big <laughs> building that you had people come in like that that's John how you made B. your money people set up tables and had big gatherings in your place guess what that ain't happening like what are these concert venues gonna do oh they're done man they're done it's gonna change what we do concerts man it's gonna all be online which is the way you know things need to go probably so but we're not talking about corona no. i thought that was really it, interesting it's, it is interesting um but you it's know controversial for sure <laughs> smearing somebody like you know it's <laughs> I mean, I like I said, man. I just I have a I have a I have a hard time of like not seeing things from two perspectives. Right. I always try to see things from both sides of the picture. Oh. Yeah. So I'm like, look, you busted my balls. I'm broke. Right. But either way, you, you got anything else? That's, I've got no. I got so go ahead. You don't. Yeah. Beavis and Butthead's getting remade. Again. Yes. They're coming back with like a whole new season it's or a, a reboot of Beavis and Butthead. So they're going to show it's going to be on Amazon Prime, I believe. No, no, I'm not sure what it's going to be on. Okay. But, but that's going to be a thing. Mike Judge is going to oversee it. Okay. I don't know if he's doing any of the writing or, but I'm sure he's going to have. A He'll hand. be like a producer or something. Yeah. So, okay. And I thought that was really cool. Well, um, yeah, because normally when they bring something back, they don't get the original people involved and it's garbage. Yeah. So it looks like it's going to be Beavis and Butthead, but they are going to be like in today's society dealing with like millennials and Zoomers. So they're going to be old. So like I don't know if they'll be any different in age, but oh, okay, I got you. Yeah. It would be kind of neat if they were like grown a little bit more, but they still oh, were like similar. Like, <laughs> you want like Rugrats all grown up situation? Oh here? God, never mind. You never watched any of that? No, but I, I mean, I just yeah. When you try to take characters that were young and then make them old, it just doesn't translate. It's not a lot, man. Not a lot. Not all the time. That's like why Bart Simpson has been 
10 for 30 exactly. years. Exactly. They tried. They did in like maybe one episode. <laughs> They've done episode. some episodes where they tried to, and everyone's just like, this is stupid. Yeah. Lisa's a college student and shit, dude. Yeah. No, dude, I'm good. Yeah, I love Beavis and but like, I, like, they're not going to be able to do the, uh, like, sitting and watching music video. Like, can you imagine no. sitting and watching, like, a uh, Takashi video, dude? <laughs> 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 Good, actually, it would be. It would be great. Yeah, because they were always like, they were just funny with some of the shit. Yeah, they would it was say, just like they played like, like the like just the dumb like they'd be like Beavis. Why does this guy have rainbow hair? <laughs> like, like it's just and then like, Beavis would go on about I saw a rainbow one day and yeah. it made him cry or something. Right, shit. dude, exactly. Yo, see, I grew up. We grew up. Me and Jonas grew up with that. Beavis and Butthead. I guess for people who don't even know, man, just two metalheads. Who were just dumb, very uneducated, just stupid, dude. And they would watch music videos and they make comment, kind of, kind of yeah. MST three K. Yeah, it wouldn't be so much like making fun of video itself, other than like it would be like they did. It's like they were just completely ignorant to everything. Oh yeah, they were stupid. Yeah. So it was just like anything, and they'd be like, "Hey, what is that?" <laughs> like, like, <laughs> they would chase bugs and eat, but mostly they just go and get nachos from the gas station. Right, it was just like following around town and they interact with like yeah. King of the Hill came from Beavis and Butthead. It that was like a character absolutely spinoff. Absolutely did, yeah. So, you know, it was, it was uh, great. Uh, so yeah, it's coming back. That's cool. Uh, Amazon Prime. The Amazon Prime one was the fact that they're making a Fallout series as well. Really? Yes. Series based on Fallout. Yeah. No writer attached to this one yet, but maybe That'd be kind of cool. I know you like that Fallout shit. I do, man. I, it's just the same thing as like with Skyrim. It's so much that like I lose interest after I. Yeah. It's a show, though. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if I would dig that. Yeah, because it's you, not. I, I didn't care so much about the story. I just like the open world aspect where you can like roam around and do what you want. So and, you like to play it, but you don't know if you like to see a world with like rad rats. And yeah, and yeah. Stuff. I don't know if I'd like all Yo, that. Oh, I. <laughs> Um, That's right up my alley. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But what? I, uh, I saw a meme online about Fallout in the uh, pandemic. He's the, the person was like, uh, the person said something. What they say? They said, "I used to love Fallout, but now I realize it's it's unrealistic as hell. Ain't no way anybody's staying in a vault that long if a nuclear holocaust happens <laughs> <laughs> or something like that." And I was like, "Yo, I was like, that's so true." <laughs> We are not staying in this vault for uh, how many? Whatever, years? yeah. However, yeah, no, yeah. there could no, be like no, a nuclear no, no, fall no. holocaust, and everyone's in the vault, and like three months goes by, they're like, "Yo, dog, I'm getting out of this <laughs> vault." They're like, "But the but the but the waste is like you're gonna, yeah. no, nah, dude, I'm done." I, All I, right, you can go out, but you have to wear a mask. That'll work for a month. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wear this radiation suit. They're like, "Okay," they're like, "You know what? F this suit, dude. I don't care. <laughs> I'm ready to party." Yeah. <laughs> I'm opening up a bar down the street, dude. There's some, <laughs> some there's some nuclear beer in there. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. I, I was gotta like, see oh. my friends. My <laughs> friends over at Vault 111. Gotta go see them. Yeah, right, Sorry. dude. Yeah. So I was just oh, like, oh Jesus. That's but. crazy. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Fallout series, Butthead and Beavis coming out. Man. That's cool, man. I mean, uh, I, I'm assuming that the Beavis and Butthead will definitely be animated. So you know that that makes it so that can actually happen in today's society. Fallout, I'm not so sore, but sure. sure so sure about the format the trailer for it is kind of innocuous but oh they have a trailer for fallout <laughs> is it more like a more like a teaser it's it, just it... words on the screen it says i know bethesda yeah <laughs> amazon prime <laughs> 20 something i love when they do that like they'll be like this is coming and it'll be like one world a man and then it shows mm. like just like the eye of the monster yeah. you know, so, and then you're just like coming 2028 20, and you're yeah. like oh no, cool. okay yeah yeah hype me up dude yeah thanks so uh yeah man you got any you got any other other stuff no, i talked about all the stuff i wanted to talk right, about it's one more thing that i read about and it is actually a very positive thing i hope so it is like it uh and, and it won't take too long to talk about have you ever heard of the term rebirth day oh jesus jonas is this some freaking millennial shit? No, no. Actually, I think the, the term, I, I'm not sure I care. But, like, the idea of it is a very positive thing. Like baptizing? No. So, basically, what it is, because I heard someone, I saw online someone say something about rebirth day. And I'm like, what the, what the fuck are they talking about rebirth day? And, you know, I figured it was something like some sort of thing, like, like you said, like a millennial thing. But what it is, is I guess it's a new, it's a new sort of, like, way that they have... It's a tool that people use to overcome, like, uh, past traumas or to celebrate, like, 
a change in their life. Like the example that I saw online was like, uh, I, I went and they found a, re it was like a, a nonprofit website that described it. It was like, the example they gave was like this, like a person gets a DUI. The, D the date of the DUI makes the, when they get the DUI, that's what makes them realize, holy shit, I have an alcohol problem. They decide to get treatment. They change their life. They move forward. So then, then moving forward in order, they celebrate the day they got the DUI as the day that changed their life in a positive way. And then moving forward, every time they hit that day, it's a way to celebrate how they've moved forward and progressed and moved past this trauma or addiction or whatever. So it is some millennial shit. Is it? That's oh. pretty millennial hipster shit. I'm, I mean, I'm not mad at it, but it has to own up for what it is. Right. It's a millennial shit. Is that, is that what it is? Okay. Sure. Because Jonas, look, you're the boomer of the of the relationship. All right, a hundred percent of the not a hundred percent. I say you're a boomer probably about eighty percent of the time. I'm boomer maybe ten percent of the time. But my boomer side was my boomer sense was tingling right there. Oh, right. Like, I was like, as soon as oh, I said rebirthday, it was just like, ding, ding. yeah, dude. I was I automatically got intolerant, dude. Just a little bit. <laughs> No, I mean, it's a cool idea. I get it. Um, it's a way to not hold a negative ideation for a bad point in your life, but to hold it in positive because you've made the Right, right. And even if it was something just like another trauma, like you yeah. got divorced or ended an abusive relationship yeah. or, you know, like, yeah, that was the day that I finally, like, they my abusive partner went too far and I moved the F out because they did whatever. Yeah. Commemorating these events are, are, are like, that's not really a new thing. I think of like uh, Al Alcoholics Anonymous, how they have like the chips and oh, even yeah. like uh, with rehab. You're celebrating with a commemorative item and you're, you know, you get a new one every month that, you know. Month, yeah. And then it goes <laughs> to years or like whatever. In a way that I felt like that was like celebrating the idea of making that change. Um, yeah, it's, I like the idea of tethering it to the, the bad event that caused you to make the change as well. You know, yeah, exactly. I think you should definitely be proud if you are making a positive change in your well, life. Well, yeah, because especially if it was a very traumatic thing, like, you know, some sort of like, like an abusive relationship or something like, you know, yeah, that day that person may have beat the shit out of you and yeah. it was an awful time, but you can either sit there and be like, today's the day that my ex beat the shit out of me yeah. or today's the day that I recognized how terrible my life was and I turned that shit around. Yeah. You know, like it's it, either way, it ha definitely has a negative connotation Yo. but it depends on how you see it and move forward exactly. from it exactly one of my favorite uh one of my favorite quotes that i don't even know who said it was i appreciate even the bad that life gives me because it is a chance to to gain strength from it is the or even the bad is the gift of strength yeah. So yeah, I I hundred percent take all that life gives me. Yeah, and that's very life true because me. if I think about the, all the really bad shit that's happened to me in my life, you needed that. It sucked at the time. You needed, but it. but yeah, it's like, and I think like, I, and I don't want to say that you like you can't be a, <laughs> like a good person until bad shit happens to you, but like having bad shit to you happen to you makes you like it, it almost makes you a better person because it like, does. because you're like you don't take shit for granted or you like it does yeah yeah it's like. You know, it's 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 interesting. No. When you go through it, it sucks ass, man. It's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, being being privileged and sheltered will it'll leave you a little fucked up when the world gets real because the world is definitely more real than than it is privileged and sheltered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and I've always kind of said like people who have um, a very traumatic event happen to them at a young age. I think are more well adjusted as they get older than people who don't have any who think the world is perfect. And then they're 35 in their first major event. Like their friend dies unexpectedly. Mm. A parent dies. They, they something really bad happened. Like sort of those sort of things. They're not. They're not you built have no, up for it, right? Like if it happens to you when you're like a kid, yeah, it sucks. But like you have way more of a support and like to to work through it. And then you, as you grow old, you have that realization like. Anything bad can happen to me at any time. Mm -hmm. But if your whole life has been fucking rainbows, cupcakes, and kittens, and you're 35 years old and your mom falls over dead because she had a heart attack, your world is destroyed and you're a grown ass woman at that point with a career and like. Jonas, you just gave me the best business idea. What's Emotional parties and we just degrade and berate people, <laughs> break their hearts, hurt their feelings. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're making them stronger for the future. They'll be stronger. So we so we just ask them everything about their hopes and dreams and family and then completely devil's advocate to death until they hate themselves. Yeah, dude. We just like do some fucked up shit to them, <laughs> <Wow>. Jonas. <laughs> just some fucked <laughs>
What? We're making them stronger. <laughs> what you don't I, get? I want no part of this business. <laughs> it's a good idea. They do it. They they ask us. They sign a waiver. It's oh, cool. it's like it's like one of those uh, things where like uh, it was like on that show uh, those Halloween scared those like haunted houses. But there's this one that uh, you go and you have to sign all these waivers, and the and the uh, the guy literally interviewed you. Thought this like thirty page waiver, and he and you talked to him about all your worst fears and all this yeah, shit. No, sure. And he literally, if it's like it's something, and if you survive through it, some you get money or something. Yeah. But he goes to so extreme and exploits all of your worst fears that everyone has quit. Yeah, because, I like that. And you sign all the waivers, and then he puts you through basically your worst fears, and like if you can survive it. Well, you, no, I'm not paying anybody. I think they just pay me, though. See? Oh, I got it. It's you. like one of those restaurants where they disrespect you, and that's a part of the new Dude, I love that. I, <laughs> I loved it, dude. Like, what the hell do you want? Here's like, your fucking hot dog. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Yeah, like, hey, can I get some more water? Yeah, at some point. Yeah, but I, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, man. That is all the time we have for today's episode. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you've already done that. Uh, this guy, he's on Twitch. TNT 9 and on Twitch every single day at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock Central AM, by the way. That's TNT, D-I-N-O-M-I-G-H-T underscore crazy town. Sweat all over my chest. And get your morning started out with some dynamite in your life. Yeah. Your boy. Jesus. All three. You have 97 taglines now. I got to cut it down. It's I know. Gonna, it's yeah. going to get cut down. For sure. We'll catch you on the next one. We are. Oh, your boy. <laughs>